Hello, this is a slice of the liver and here is one cut surface. I'm just going to turn it around to show you the opposite surface. And looking at this, we can appreciate that the pathology is a diffuse one. This is actually causing some degree of hepatomegaly or liver enlargement. And when we have a diffuse process that is pretty much uniformly affecting all areas of the parenchyma, the differential diagnosis is actually quite distinct from that of a discrete or localized process or a lesion, such as a mass, a cyst, or a focus of infection like an abscess. In diffuse conditions of the liver, some common examples would include chronic venous congestion, fatty liver, and this condition, which is not as common, and this is an example of amyloidosis involving the liver. The typical gross appearance of amyloidosis in the liver is that it can cause a variable degree of hepatomegaly, and usually on the cut surface, there is a kind of a waxy appearance. It's not very readily appreciated here. Perhaps it is better seen if the liver is a little bit more fresh. And uh, the texture of the liver would also generally be a little bit firmer than usual. Here is another example of amyloidosis. And this is taken from the online pathology resource, Pathopic. So this liver appears to be a little bit paler than a usual liver and in fact it has an almost yellowish appearance. And here is a closer up picture of another case showing you this waxy yellowish appearance. This is different from fatty liver where usually the liver itself appears to be quite pale. And here is an example of amyloidosis involving the spleen. So in the spleen, it is interesting because there are two patterns of involvement. One where the amyloid deposits can go into the follicles in the spleen and give you little pale spots all over the spleen, and that is known as sago spleen. This is the other appearance, which is known as laudaceous spleen, where you can see that the amyloid is a little bit more diffuse. On histology, the amyloid is seen more in the regions of the red pulp in laudaceous spleen. It is called laudaceous spleen because it has a kind of waxy, pale appearance when you compare this to the normal spleen. Um, for example, in lard or in hardened fatty tissue, it can appear quite waxy. On microscopy, um, amyloid is actually an abnormal protein that is by definition extracellular in location. It has a specific beta pleated conformation. It resists destruction and digestion by the cells in the body. So once it accumulates in the tissues, it is there to stay. Here is an example of the microscopic picture of a liver with amyloidosis. These are the residual hepatic cords. You can see this here. The hepatocytes themselves are quite atrophic because they have been compressed by these amorphous pale pinkish amyloid deposits. So you can see, for example, this hepatocyte, this hepatocyte, they're kind of really encroached upon by this amyloid. And the amyloid deposits are found in the space of this, meaning that they are between the hepatocytes and the sinusoids. So eventually, this can really severely compress on the hepatic parenchyma and cause pressure atrophy of the hepatocytes. And surprisingly though, liver function can be maintained quite well even in quite advanced cases of amyloidosis. There are many different types of amyloid protein. I'll just mention briefly two of the commoner clinical scenarios. One is AL amyloid light chain, which is produced by abnormal plasma cells in plasma cell dyscrasias, where they, uh, where they actually produce abnormal immunoglobulins. And the other one is AA, amyloid A protein, which is produced by hepatocytes in the setting of chronic inflammatory conditions, for example, chronic infections, uh, tuberculosis, bronchiectasis. This used to be more common in the past, where the treatment was not as effective. But also currently in autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, the patients can also have amyloidosis. So just to summarize, this is an example of amyloidosis of the liver with a waxy cut surface and a firm texture of the liver.